Hello, we are in the week 9th of this course on polymers and viscoelasticity is still with us. Given the importance of viscoelasticity in polymeric systems, uh, we have at least uh, spent uh, two weeks uh, trying to analyze different aspects. Uh, in this lecture, we will look at a uh, couple of examples uh, which highlight uh, many of the concepts that we have seen. So, by focusing on properties of uh, polymeric materials, uh, we will uh, get further insights into viscoelastic response of polymers. And uh, this we will do by uh, doing two things. We will look at an example of a master curve, uh, which is obtained uh, doing time temperature superposition as we discussed earlier. And uh, we have discussed dielectric response, we have discussed uh, mechanical response. So, can we not uh, look at viscoelasticity and compare and contrast behavior obtained from different techniques. So, we will look at one example related to viscoelasticity from different techniques. So, let us uh, begin by looking at uh, this uh, classical data, uh, which is uh, for polystyrene. And uh, again, uh, what we can do is do experiments in lab for time scales, which are up to 10 to the power 6 seconds, 10 to the power 7 seconds. So, this is uh, basically uh, some days and that is uh, doable. Uh, and uh, what you can see uh, is the experiment is done at several different temperatures and look at the, uh, and, uh, the range of temperature and that is why such uh, data is part of all the textbooks related to polymers. The temperature is varied from very low temperature to very high temperature. And what we can see is the compliance, right? Uh, compliance varies from uh, very low, which means the material is uh, stiff and uh, does not comply as much. The strain in the material is very less. Remember that uh, compliance is related to strain in the material divided by the constant load that is being applied in a creep experiment. So, strain is very high at high temperature. Again, something which is uh, easy for us to understand. Now, you can see that there is uh, all different types of qualitative response. We have basically constant uh, compliance, which implies an elastic, hooky and elastic behavior. We also have pretty much constant increase in compliance, which pretty much implies Newtonian viscous response. And again, at lower temperature, we would expect uh, the solid like response, elastic. And uh, at very high temperature, we would expect uh, Newtonian. So, it is very uh, nicely captured in uh, the data here. Now, what we can do is uh, shift these curves. So, we can let us say pick uh, uh, any one of the temperature as our reference temperature and then start shifting the curve. So, let us say if uh, we are interested in uh, looking at the material response at 90, then what we can do is uh, these curves can be shifted to the left and uh, all these curves can be shifted to the right. And uh, what you can see is initially the uh, stress is uh, compliance is constant, then it increases and uh, the then in this region you can again see that uh, when we stack different uh, curves like this, preparing a master curve, what we will see is there is again a plateau and then again it starts increasing. So, therefore, again it, uh, so this is will be the type of master curve that we will get. And why do we get a master curve like this? What do the different regions in this master curve imply? Basically, what we are trying to suggest through this master curve is very low time we have material elastic. If we do not give chains enough time to uh, untwist or uh, uh, do uh, any deformation, there is no segmental uh, mobility. Uh, in that case, basically we have no compliance. And uh, very large time if we give, then uh, the uh, material will deform. And this is a curve which is prepared at 90. But uh, the time, uh, because we will do the shifting and it may uh, happen that the time will be 10 to the power 15 seconds. So, it basically require years, not just some years we may require thousands and millions of years for it to actually start flowing. And that is again the concept of uh, Deborah number that we talked about that the material relaxation time and the experimental times, uh, the relationship between the two we will have to look at 
while analyzing elastic response of polymeric materials. So, if you construct a master curve uh, based on this, this is how uh, the response will be. So, what we have is basically the glassy region, then we have the transition and then we have the rubbery region and then we get the melt region. And uh, if uh, uh, these regions are uh, different uh, over basically a time scale which can be about 10 to the power 15 seconds. So, that is the range of time over which we can analyze the response of polymeric materials using the master curve approach. So, such master curves are prepared for variety of systems. Uh, you can go and look at uh, textbooks or other resources and see master curve preparation for uh, frequency E prime data or uh, master curves for uh, tan delta and uh, frequency data or we can do dielectric loss and frequency. So, any measure of viscoelasticity, if we want uh, information over multiple length scales and time scales, we can do the time temperature superposition. Now, let us close by looking at other uh, classic data. In this case, this is uh, polyvinyl alcohol and uh, its uh, permittivity as well as dielectric loss in the material. And again, the measurements are done uh, for frequencies for which dielectric spectroscopy is generally used, uh, that is millihertz to megahertz. And uh, in this case, uh, the measurements are uh, about uh, 1 hertz to 10 to the power 6 megahertz. And the measurement is done at all different temperatures and uh, from 38 uh, to about uh, 85, 83.5 degrees Celsius. And so, what you can see is at uh, higher temperature, you can clearly see this uh, Debye like uh, response, a permittivity which is roughly constant and then because of segmental mobility uh, remains frozen because very high frequency is being used for uh, the uh, electric uh, stimulus in this case the dipoles cannot orient and uh, I'm, I hope that you can recognize what is the dipole in case of polyvinyl alcohol. If you do not, please go look at the structure of polyvinyl alcohol and identify what could be the dipole that can orient. Is it part of a side group? Is it part of the backbone? Uh, try to answer those questions. And so, uh, but as we uh, change the temperature and as we go to lower and lower temperature, what happens is the uh, overall uh, uh, dipoles actually lose the ability to orient themselves because macromolecules themselves become very uh, inflexible because of reaching the glassy state. So, clearly what you can see is we again have a glass to rubber transition and that is also represented by the peak in uh, dielectric response. So, uh, uh, you can uh, Uh, recognize that uh, we discussed this during this during even Maxwell model response that uh, frequency uh, at which you observe the peak is usually where uh, omega lambda is 1. So, this peak frequency is where uh, lambda can be estimated as inverse of this frequency. So, based on this we can calculate uh, or estimate relaxation times in the material and in this case since there is a maximum in uh, dielectric loss we can get the relaxation times. And the same exercise can be carried out by doing uh, 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 sinusoidal uh, variation and calculating compliance or sinusoidal variation in calculating the modulus. And uh, in this graph for same uh, polyvinyl alcohol, the data is summarized where the relaxation time and in this case it is the inverse of relaxation time is plotted with inverse of temperature. So, temperature is increasing as we go along here and uh, time is also similarly increasing as you go along here. So, low, lower and lower temperature implies higher and higher time. And you can see that uh, there is uh, an order of magnitude difference in terms of relaxation times when you go from one technique to the other because in one case you are measuring far local phenomena in case of dipole, in the other cases they, it may be different uh, phenomenon. But you can see that overall qualitative response matches and this is something which we always do in terms of looking at viscoelasticity from different perspectives and then try to rationalize the overall response of materials. So, with this uh, we will close this lecture. We have 
uh, summarized the overall viscoelastic response using a master curve or using multiple techniques to analyze the viscoelastic response in materials. Thank you.